yeah, it was fun. It was a fun day. A se severe, a severe anxiety, because yeah. <laughs> from a traumatic snow plowing event, but yet you still plow snow. Still plow snow. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. yeah. All right, you guys, we got a busy day today. We're gonna head up to Rogers, Minnesota and pick up a trenching attachment for a mini loader. I've never ran one of these. I don't know what this day is gonna be like, but we're gonna go see my friends up at Top Notch Equipment. They're gonna let us borrow one for the weekend. And we've got 200 plus linear feet of new gas pipeline to put in place. So, Let's just go have some fun. We made it. Is Dustin around? Oh, there he is. Hey, Dustin, how you doing, buddy? I'm working good. I'm doing good, thanks. You? Good. Good to see, see you again. Good. Hey, when, one question for you. Brywick Companies. Yeah. That's your company, right? Yep. Yep. That's your maintenance company. Maintenance company. Yeah. I was telling these guys, you kind of don't look forward to snow removal, do no. you? You had a really bad experience yeah. one day. You had like all of your crew abandon you. Mm -hmm. And then you had some family problems yep. going on at the same yep. time. And that pretty much scarred you. It scarred me. I, it, like I said, I have PTSD of, for snow removal. And like two days before I know a storm is going to hit, I don't sleep. I don't eat. I just sit and try to figure everything out and uh, I learned uh, you know I'm very organized everybody has their what needs to be due yeah uh, certain people call certain people to make sure that they're on site and I actually I kind of learned that if I start like four or five hours before anybody even just to come to the shop and just I don't know start sit doing and watch something the TV, instead, of, yeah. instead of sit with your the, mind whirling get the trucks going and stuff then yep. I feel perfectly fine it's just the anticipation of it all okay it's really tough so that's the same issue that I have mm -hmm. I'm usually I'll be the first one right out to the site because yeah. I just want to start getting everything right. rolling as the owner I don't know if you guys ever experienced this but I get super stressed mm -hmm. anxiety before an event three days before yep. I see the snow I'm like Who's going to be there? Who's not going to be there? What equipment will run? What equipment's going to break down? You know, because you you got a timeline. You right. got to You got to Your back is against the wall, so yep. you got to nail it. Yeah, it's one of those things. If you have that problem, there's you just find what works for you. Like I don't even sleep in my own bedroom. I have a room in my house, my porch, and that's where I go to. Like I'll sleep on the. I'll sleep in there. That's like my Zen room. Yeah, you know, it kind of calms me. Yeah, it's, it's just separate and a lot of windows in there. I can watch the snow drop. But yeah, I just learned over the last like six, seven, eight years of like little things. Like if I do this, it makes it a little bit better. If I do that, it makes it a little bit better. You have a, a, se a severe <laughs> anxiety <Yeah. laughs> because from a traumatic snow plowing event, but yet you still plow snow. Still plow snow. There we go. So let's just talk about what the job is. Um, we're gonna be burying a gas pipeline under here. And um, we're gonna go from the house and we're gonna be going all the way up to the tank that way. And we had the option of moving the tank to the furnace or moving the line for the furnace to the tank. Hey you guys, this next part is actually pretty cool, but I got to explain what's happening here. We've got to locate the utilities on the project before we can start doing the trenching. But since the utilities we have to locate are private utilities, a public marker won't come out and locate those for us. So it's up to Frankie and I, and we've used dowsing rods in the past. And if you're not familiar with what a dowsing rod is, is typically we just take two metal clothes hangers, bend them into an L, 
and then use them to locate water lines, underground septic lines, things like that. But Frankie actually found one that is actually built and bought one to use it. He's going to demonstrate it right now. So let's dive right into that. Pipe finder two. If it's got any accuracy, should start turning about here. Look at that. Look at that. Off his tire, uh, tail. Look at that. Yeah. So within a couple of feet of accuracy, because when we came from this way, it was more of the corner. It yeah. was more of the corner. And it tells you on the other side, the instructions say when you, once you find the pipe, if you locate it, put this in the direction of the pipe, and then this should stay facing or going with the pipe or, or uh, rod should. I was surprised the first time I seen two clothes hangers work. Oh, I've and then used I, that quite a bit. And I and we dug and we found what we were looking for. Yeah, yeah that's. I can't believe they amazing. make something now. Okay, fold it up once. Let's show these guys. Because it's like a legitimate, they put a little bit of effort into this. The pipe finder too. All right, well, we got a, we know where the pipe is at. We got some digging to do. Yep. I got a trencher, so we're just going to trench it. And since it's a gas it's pipe. It's downhill anyway, so. Yeah, it's a gas pipeline. We don't have to worry about the depth. We're not worried about frost. Nope, nope. But I want to get it deep enough that we don't ever dig it up or we don't flex on it or what have right, you. Right, right. So I'd say if you if you got down two and a half, three feet, you're not going to disturb it ever again. No, I say you're right. I say if we can get that deep, we're we're good. We're good. Yeah, I would say. Okay, she works right away. We got one side Mine's in. in yeah. Yep, we're in. Good. Let's give her a test run. Expert on trenching. In fact, this is going to be the first time ever that I've used a trencher. And that's because the last time Frankie and I had to do a job like this, he almost killed me. So let's show them what we're working with. So this is one inch. This is actually the gas pro pro poly direct burial gas piping system, 300 feet. And I want to show you the connectors. The weirdest weirdest connectors ever They're, they look like plumbing connectors let me show you this. this is crazy so to take that coil and to, to pipe it over and to convert it you need this riser tube this is $57 and then here's the actual fittings it's just the same as the as plumbing fittings now and this actually is certified to go underground that's the way they want it.
I actually like to share the journey as I'm learning and kind of diving into where these things actually operate at their best. And with this trencher, it's no different. I'm trying to figure out which way it runs the best, which angle to put it at, and I get this mach I get this dialed into the point here in a little bit where it runs so smoothly that I don't even need to be in the machine. That's not an exaggeration. This eventually gets to the point where I can step out of the machine and the entire thing just keeps going right where I want it to go. It's kind of fun learning and I hope you guys enjoy the learning process and the fact that I don't cover any of that up as I'm going through it. Rear steer. Yeah, it's tough. It's tougher. Right. I mean, I like the rear steer in general, but right now what's happening is when I'm rear steering, it's throwing my front totally away from where I want to go. So my back line is following, but my front line is going the exact opposite oh. way. Uh, so that's going to be one of the few disadvantages of a rear steer that I can see right now. So what I'm going to end up doing is repositioning as I go around this corner so I can line my back end up and then redigging this trench and we'll just have to push a little bit in and right. looks like we're already getting some cave-ins. Well, and that's all right. That's where you went in double. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's going to be softer too, yeah. so that ain't going to be that big of a deal. another line once before and Frankie almost killed me and what had happened was Frankie was like oh we can just do it by hand and you know I wanted to keep up with Frankie but Frankie's a tank man he's 61 years old and he outworked 17 18 and 19 year old guys when I was not gonna let him outwork me but by the end of the day we had dug in I don't know it was a 90 foot line through hard packed soil just using shovels Dude, I couldn't walk for days after that. That's why I have this thing. I was like, I'm not letting him do that to me again. We got one. 
once we get it dialed in, we don't even need to be there anymore. <laughs> oh, that's all good. Yeah, that's a nice looking trench. Drone is yelling at me. It can yell all it wants. Nice and flat. Once you get it dialed in. Oh, there's a big rock. That's gonna come off. Oh, I'm not gonna put I'm gonna put, put that on the pipe or the pipe on that. Don't crawl in your trenches. Just don't. I mean, I did because I got to grab a rock out of the bottom. But don't crawl in a trench because they're super duper dangerous, especially even if you got a spotter. It doesn't matter. The skinnier the trenches, like this one collapses in on me. What's well, not the end of the world, but a lot of guys lose their lives every year because trenches collapse in on them. Just like I figured, just like I figured it's a one-way trip. Going through it is no big deal because the front end doesn't have anything to catch going that way, but going backwards we're hung up on the counterway. See if we got her connected. Yep, hydro bucket's on. They are ready to go. So the hydro bucket has a power ring built into the back of it. Let me lift it up and show it to you.
How does it go together? Pretty easy. And that's gonna be gas proof? I mean leak proof? Supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. Okay. We'll put this end in first, then we gotta cut this pipe again, but yeah. More okay. back though. Okay, we put this in. Put a stiffener in. There's little stops here, or you can see these little ridges in there. Or maybe you can or can't, but. Yep, I see them. Okay, that'll, that'll pull it up. We put it in as far as we can anyways. And then we just tighten it in. Can't go no tighter, so it's so gotta be good. That's hopefully good. Right. All right. And then do the same on the other side, but I gotta cut that pipe. Okay. So we'll have to measure that pipe. So it's yep. All right. Well, we got the line in. The trench is done. I'd say. Do just get a couple fittings. I'd say that was the easiest trench we ever dug. <laughs> yeah. Compared to how we normally dig them. But you can see we've already got it graded out, backfilled. Tomorrow we just gotta Great test job. the line. Yeah. So I would say overall it's an absolute success and I hope overall you guys had fun. And uh, I we, did. yeah, it was fun, it was a fun day. Hope you enjoyed today, God bless. Go get them you guys and we'll see you on another one. Lucy, got any final words of wisdom for these guys? Don't get your tail caught in the door. What's that Lucy? Yeah, that sucks when you get your tail caught in the door. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Lucy. <laughs> See you guys on the next one. Have a good one, you guys.